I uh, was raised on the blood reserve. I was, like they say, raised uh, by the village. There was um, a very warm, loving, giving, sharing, especially sharing community. I left the reserve uh, in my early 20s. I'm in my early 70s. It's been a 50 year plus round trip, so to speak. <laughs> From about my eighth or ninth year, we received our, um, I'll, I'll use the term, store-bought house. <laughs> Prior to that, Daddy had uh, built a one large room uh, home from different houses that uh, had been um, kind of sort of outgrown. We didn't have TV. We didn't even have electricity. <laughs> uh, uh, we didn't have uh, running water in that house. It was uh, um, built in that era that uh, electricity, telephone wires, natural gas lines had not um, been installed on the reserve yet. But it was home again, and uh, it was a happy home. And then my dad got sick, and he, he was sent to uh, Edmonton. Our family kind of went uh, different ways, but the thing was, those, that year, year and a half, two years that, the, the, that we were up there, really imprinted in my mind and in my spirit, home. I've been uh, allocated a residence, a unit, a structure, a home, a house, and uh, I'm just waiting to get the green light uh, to move into it. Uh, I get these butterflies in my stomach when I start talking about returning, and then they kind of grow into dragons, so try and c calm them down. A lot of non-native people will drive past or through a reserve and they see, uh, you know, big, nice houses from the outside, um, abandoned, left. There is reason why houses are left abandoned, not because it was free. There was something wrong with it. The family that was it was gifted to uh, again by by the the way the outside world looks in on on the res reservation uh, lifestyles. The family couldn't see themselves living in that unit because it was worse than where they were at. Oh my God! Not one reservation Indian um, throughout Canada gets housing free. We do not get free housing. We live on Crown Land, what is called the Crown Land, the, the, the reservation land base that the, a very generous Canadian government with the monarchy behind them give gift to us First Nations. And uh, on this land base, my dad, he signed a quit claim and had me take over his land base on behalf of my sons, because it's not normal for a female First Nation to own large tracts of land. It, it just doesn't work out that way. That land base, Dad had 100 acres, maybe less, and turned it into a grain field. From the proceeds of this this, this cropland, the proceeds are then apparently applied to either a monthly or a yearly payment on the house. If a person is working, their uh, wages can be uh, included in the list of income, if you can call it that. Uh, so it's crown land that the house sits on, um, that the grain uh, grows on and it, 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 it cycled within. That's the way I understand it at this point. Friday night, and the phone rings and here's this uh, housing committee member. Hi, Blanche, he says. Um, 
how are you? I said, I'm, I'm good. And he says, are you sitting down? I said, yep. And he says, you got a house. <laughs> yeah, right, you know. Like, that's that was my response. Yeah, right. And he says, no, no, Blanche, you have a house. And I don't recollect too much of that conversation after that. And uh, then it became reality for me that I was, you know, I'd gotten a house and uh, it's going to be my forever home. It's mine, but it's not mine. You know, I, I, that's the best way I can explain it. It's mine. As long as I say it's mine, I cannot sell that structure. I cannot sell the land it sits on. I am only an occupant. I am not a landowner, but I do not own the land. Treaty of First Nations cannot own the land base that they are on within the boundaries of the reserve. We cannot do that. The structures that go on that land, we do not own, we occupy. We, there's no equity to that unit. It's a thousand square feet of you know, I can't even get insurance, um, homeowners or renters insurance on my own reserve. I can't get that because non-native um, um, entities will not provide for that. I wish the powers in place as we, as we speak today, as I live and breathe today, would get a... Uh, a hold of truth, the absolute 100% truth, and not keep First Nations uh, the deep, dark secret of Canada, so that we will really, really reach reconciliation, not in my generation, probably not even in my great-grandchildren's generation. But I wish it could. The powers that are in place would really openly face their shortcomings for all these years, last, what, 350, 500 years, and make them right for First Nations so that we are all Canadians. Let me add to that. Okay. Canadians of equal status. There we go.